It's the third day of the five-day Hindu festival of Dipavali as people are celebrating Gaiti Har today. The cow holds immense significance in Hindu culture as it is worshipped as a representation of Goddess Lakshmi. Tihar revelers also indulge in playing Deusi, an integral part of the Tihar festival. The celebrations will culminate with Govardhan Puja and Ma Puja tomorrow and Bhaitika on the final day of the five-day celebration on Wednesday. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. Gai Tihar being celebrated on the third day of Yama Panchak today. Cows being worshipped as a representation of Goddess Lakshmi. Bhaitika auspicious timing at 10.51 a.m. on Wednesday. The government says a clear criteria will be set before calling for tender for projects exceeding a year. Government faces budget crunch for completing projects at hand. WHO says Gaza's largest hospital, Al-Shifa, among others, no longer functioning even as Israel president denies striking hospitals in Gaza. And India clinch all nine league matches to stamp their authority at the ICC World Cup 2023. Stage all set for the semi-finals on Wednesday and Thursday. On the third day of the Hindu festival of Yama Panchak or Dipavali, Gai Tihar is being celebrated with much fanfare and enthusiasm across the country. Cows considered as the representation of Goddess Lakshmi are specially worshipped today as they are also given some specially prepared delicacies. Cows are also worshipped as mothers as the milk provided by cow is considered sacred and as nutritious as a mother's milk. Cows also holds other practical implications in a Hindu culture as its urine is also considered sacred and used to treat various ailments while cow dung since ages has been used as a source of fuel. The Hindu culture also believes that worshipping a cow on the day of Gaiti Har also helps in the salvation of our soul. There is an age-old tradition of tying the sacred thread that we had received earlier on Raksha Bandhan on the tail of cows on this day of Gaiti Har. <laughs> The Tihar revelers also indulge in merry-making with Devsi songs and dance as they go around from door to door asking for the blessings of Goddess Lakshmi on households, while in return they are offered money and delicacies specially prepared in Tihar. The Newar community of the three districts in the Kathmandu Valley will observe Mahapuja and Paitika on separate days. Mahapuja will be observed in Bhaktapur and Lalitpur today, while Kizapuja or Bhaitika will be celebrated tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Newar community of Kathmandu will observe both the occasions a day later. A meeting held in Bhaktapur decided to observe Mao Puja today after 2.41 p.m. amid confusion regarding the dates to observe the occasion. Meanwhile, they have decided to observe Bhaitika tomorrow evening. Meanwhile, Hiranya Mahavihar, head of astrologer Joshi, Nepal Bhasa, Manka Khala and Japu Samaj among other groups of 21 ethnic communities decided to observe Mao Puja today and Kiza Puja and Bhaitika tomorrow in Lalitpur. The Newar community will welcome New Year known as the Nepal Sambat tomorrow. Meanwhile, according to the meeting of the Newar De Dabo, a national forum for Newar organizations, the Newar community of Kathmandu will celebrate Mao Puja tomorrow and Kiza Puja or Bhaitika on Wednesday. The Calendar Determination Committee, meanwhile, has said that Govardhan Puja and Mao Puja is to be observed tomorrow and Bhaitika on Wednesday. Nepal Sambad 1144 will be observed tomorrow as per the astrological timings. The sales of local and traditional products have gone up during the Tihar festival in the markets that sell majority of imported goods in other times. Along with flowers like marigold, which are needed in Tihar, brooms, Nepali dhaka cloth, red mud, among other items, are being sold. During the Tihar festival, products of small and marginalized farmers have found market. 
Local products are being sold at Kathmandu's Asan, Lalitpur's Patan and in markets of Paktapur. Apart from the traditional products, dry fruits worth more than 2 billion rupees are sold during Tihar, while decorating colorful lights worth around 50 million rupees are imported as per the statistics provided by the Department of Customs. Likewise, gold and silver transactions worth 1.5 to 2 billion rupees are carried out during Tihar. The Gold Silver Dealers Association has informed that 50 kilograms of gold and 10, in fact, 1,000 kilograms of silver were sold on the day of Thanteras last Friday. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces what should be done to promote traditional products that are bought during the Tihar festival. Let's take a look at what they had to say. गोदावरी Now some news related to the Jazarkot earthquake. Thirty-five thousand five hundred seventy-three tents for the Jazarkot earthquake victims have reached the quake-hit region so far. A total of thirty-two thousand seven hundred fifteen tents have been distributed to all the seven local levels. 3,749 tents have been handed so far to the earthquake victims in Zazarkot's Kushe rural municipality. Likewise, 351 tents have been distributed in Chedagard municipality, 3,873 in Junichade rural municipality, 8,871 in Nalgard municipality and 4,781 in Badekot rural municipality. The district administration office has informed that 6,189 tents have been handed in Bheri municipality and 2,201 tents in Shivale rural municipality. Likewise, 10,771 bags of rice have reached the district as relief assistance, out of which 1,191 bags have been distributed in Kushe rural municipality, 1,392 in Chedagard municipality and 787 bags in Junichade rural municipality. The local administration has informed that 2,575 bags of rice have also been distributed in Nalgard municipality, 395 in Barikot rural municipality, 2,440 in Bhedi municipality and 702 in Shivalaya rural municipality. The government has decided to imp immediately hand over 50,000 rupees to the earthquake victims for the construction of their shelters. An executive meeting of the Disaster Control and Minimization Authority held today, in fact yesterday, decided to hand over 50,000 rupees to the earthquake victims from Jadarkot and Rukum West immediately for the construction of temporary houses. The assistance amount will be provided in two installments. The Zazarkot earthquake on the night of 3rd of November, just over a week ago, had destroyed some 26,557 houses, while 35,455 houses were partially damaged. The authority has also drawn maps of three different sizes for the construction of temporary homes. 
The authority estimates that 4.7 billion rupees would be spent for the construction of the temporary houses. Meanwhile, experts have called on the government to declare Jazarkot and Rukum West as crisis hit region. Meanwhile, the authority has informed that 32,218 trapulins, 132 tents, 24,322 blankets, among other relief materials, have been distributed to the earthquake victims in Jazarkot. Likewise, 18,977 trapulins, 489 tents, and 10,300 in fact, 10,737 blankets have been distributed, among other relief assistance, in Rukum West. The government has said that a clear, clear criteria will be set before calling for tender for projects that will take more than a year for completion. The government has decided to issue tenders for projects that have been prioritized amid difficulty in accumulating resources. The government had that, that is being criticized for failing to clear dues of the previous year of contractor companies have been hesitating to call for new tenders. According to the Ministry for Physical Infrastructure and Transportation, more than 400 billion rupees is required to complete the ongoing development projects. The government has been reluctant to call for tender for projects under government priority as well amid failure to generate funds. The government has failed to collect tax as per its target as the national economy has been reeling under crisis while government expenses have been increasing. The government has collected 295 billion rupees within three and a half months while government expense stands at 355 billion rupees. The country's development expenditure has been limited to 29.98 billion rupees. Meanwhile, the current expenses has been recorded at 271 billion rupees. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question, what could be the reason for the halting of the government's tender process? Your options are A, government inability, B, lack of fund, and C, procedural hassles. Voting is on. Tap any WS. Select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has warned of a dire and perilous situation in Gaza's hospitals, saying that more patients, including premature babies, are tragically dying. Gaza's two largest hospitals, Al-Shifa and Al-Quds, have both closed. Israeli snipers continue to fire at anyone near Al-Shifa hospital, trapping thousands inside. The International Committee of the Red Cross has said the conditions under which civilians are evacuating in the Gaza Strip are precarious and unsafe. European Union Foreign Policy Chief Josep Borrell has said pauses are needed to enable the evacuation of hospital patients who need urgent medical care. More than 11,100 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7, although the number has not been updated since contact was lost with a number of hospitals on Friday. In Israel, the death toll from Hamas's attack stands at more than 1,200, having been revised downwards from 1,400. Five U.S. Special Operations troops were killed when their helicopter crashed into the Mediterranean Sea during a training mission, U.S. officials said yesterday. U.S. European Command said search and rescue operations were launched immediately following the crash and an investigation into its cause is underway. The troops aboard the helicopter were U.S. Army Special Operations personnel, according to two U.S. officials, speaking on the condition of anonymity. The United States has deployed two aircraft carriers, the Ford and the Eisenhower, along with supporting ships and dozens of aircraft to the eastern Mediterranean since Hamas's October 7 attack on Israel to act as a deterrent to ensure the conflict does not expand. U.S. President Joe Biden and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin expressed condolences in a statement yesterday. 
Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said that Canada does not want a fight with India amid frayed diplomatic relations between the two countries following Ottawa's claim that India, Indian agents may have been involved in the murder of a Canadian Sikh separatist leader from Punjab state. Mutual recriminations since that accusation, which India strongly denies, have strained ties between the two countries, closed for almost a century and with extensive links through the Sikh diaspora to their worst in memory. Neither New Delhi nor Ottawa looks likely to take dramatic steps to reconcile soon as Canada's murder investigation proceeds and Prime Minister Narendra Modi prepares for Indian national elections by May. Canada expelled India's intelligence chief in Ottawa. India quickly responded by halting 13 categories of visas for Canadians and cutting Canada's diplomatic presence in India, a move Ottawa said violated the Vienna Conventions. Then on October 25, New Delhi said it would resume issuing visas under four categories, a measure Indian officials said aims to help people of Indian origin travel to India during the wedding season beginning this month. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. Gaitihar being celebrated on the third day of Yamapanchak today. Cows being worshipped as a representation of Goddess Lakshmi. Haitika auspicious timing at 10.51 a.m. on Wednesday. The government says a clear criteria will be set before calling for tender for projects exceeding a year. Government faces budget crunch for completing projects at hand. WHO says Gaza's largest hospital, Al-Shifa, among others, no longer functioning, even as Israel president denies striking hospitals in Gaza. And India clinch all nine league matches to stamp their authority at the ICC World Cup 2023. Stage all set for the semi-finals on Wednesday and Thursday. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. We wish our viewers happy Tihar.